Hey everybody, I just wanted to comment on some really disturbing YouTube clips I found about how this country is so going to the right wing and these crazy Christians that are ready to just kill us bleeding heart liberals. Take a look at some of these clips, it's scary. Oh, and before, there's a couple clips from Trump that I have to focus on about how he talks about um, God and things and then how he's the savior or something and then we'll get into the Christians you know nobody has done more for Christianity nobody has done more for religion of all type than me and they're really doing things now too and I've always said it they are against organized religion they're against Christianity and of course very bad I remember Joe Biden saying months ago at this press conference he had that he goes, he couldn't believe all these Republicans still afraid of Trump. It's like, oh, they're all afraid of Trump. Should Republicans be afraid of you, the ones that are, are not in line with you and your views? Well, if they want to win politically, probably, because if I endorse them, they win. And if I don't endorse them, they don't win. I mean, that's mm -hmm. almost 100 percent of the case. And they had a lot of other things to it. So somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So I'm taking on China. I'm taking on Ch I am the chosen one? Give me a break, Cheeto head. You make me fucking sick. Let's move on to the crazy Christians that think we need to, like, get rid of gay marriage, abortion, interracial marriage. Let's look at them. This nonsense about uh, separation of church and state has gotten way, way beyond the bounds of what the founders of our Constitution thought. Christians are tired of being bullied for their faith in the public square. The, the left, uh, the socialists, have made it very clear that they stand against the church unless we bow down and accept their agenda. Effort to take Christ, God, out of uh, the public the public square, and our country is uh, in trouble. We are more divided today since the Civil War. Only God can fix the problems we face as a country. And I think it goes back to uh, prayer in school. We've not only taken God out of, out of the prayer out of school, but we've taken God out of school, out of education. I believe Christians are being persecuted. I believe religious liberty is under attack, and we've seen that. Our country was founded as a Christian nation, but uh, we certainly are not that today. There's a great spiritual awakening in America. Freedom is not America's gift to the world. Freedom is the almighty God's gift to each man and woman in this world. We all salute the same great American flag, and we are all made by the same Almighty God. Christian nationalist is a, is a relatively new word. And I would argue that a Christian nationalist believes that Christianity was privileged at the time of the founding, and thus it should be always privileged. So those who fuse love of country, patriotism with Christianity, and then develop a political philosophy built upon those beliefs, that America is exceptional, and we need to build public policy around those convictions. Our nation right now, it's like, if you've ever seen the Lord of the Rings movie, and the orcs are, are released from the place of darkness, and did you know there's only one thing that can push back the darkness? And it's not Black Lives Matter. And it's not Antifa. The left, they believe in abortion. We think it's murder. They believe in gay marriage. We don't believe that. We believe that there's one kind of love between a man and a woman that makes a marriage. So churches are trying to pretend like that divide isn't there, but we're not. We're, we're saying, hey, there is a divide, and we're going to pick a side. Who won the election? Trump! By a... Trump has very much affected Patriot Church. I think 10 years ago, it wouldn't have worked. But right now, we're striking oil. He probably got like 80 million. He probably got like 80 million. We could lose that with the Biden presidency. All right, I'm getting a headache from all this, honestly. But it just gets worse. Just keep watching. Um, and this is the last little bit we'll show these last few clips. And it just makes me shudder what our country's coming to. It's like we're sliding back into the 50s and shit. 
I want Christians in office. I want this country to have Christian principles and Christian laws and Christian ways. We're about to lose this country as we've always known it. It's about to become something that a lot of people want, but I don't want it. My parents don't want it. My grandparents don't want it. It's not according to our heritage. That's why I'm fighting so hard to keep it a Christian nation. America is no longer a white Christian country, and that's going to have profound implications. In the early 1990s, fewer than one in 10 Americans said that they were religiously unaffiliated. That number today is nearly a quarter, it's 23%. About two-thirds of seniors identify as white and Christian. But if we go down to the youngest Americans, those under the age of 30, only 29% of that group identifies as white and Christian. Today we have zero Protestants on the uh, U.S. Supreme Court, and if Merrick Garland is confirmed, we will have five Catholics and four Jews. The 2012 election with Romney versus Obama is a good illustration of just how quickly the power of white Christian America has declined. Romney actually did pretty well among white evangelical voters. He hit all his basic marks that his campaign should have hit. If he had run the same campaign he ran and got the same kinds of support he got uh, in 2004, he would have won. Uh, but what had changed between 2004 and 2012 was that the religious and racial landscape had shifted just enough that it wasn't enough to put him over the top. Now, obviously, it's people and it's leaders. The tradition of a National Day of Prayer dates to 1775, when the Second Continental Congress set aside a day for Americans to pray to be ever under the care and protection of a kind providence as they began the struggle for independence. In 1952, Congress and President Truman established a National Day of Prayer as a yearly event. And President Reagan designated the first Thursday in May forevermore. But our devout Catholic commander-in-chief raised some eyebrows today by not mentioning the word God during his National Day of Prayer proclamation. The first president ever to do so. We have the perfect guest to discuss the issue. Joining me now, Reverend Franklin Graham. Before we get to the significance of the day, I saw you put out a Facebook post just moments ago reacting to the reality that Joe Biden didn't even mention God. How can you do that on that? Like overturning Roe versus Wade and appointing conservative Supreme Court justices. But there's something bigger going on. Democrats often have trouble speaking in moral or religious language, and they're part of a broader culture that doesn't take religion seriously. Democrats don't know how to talk to a lot of these, these people that go to church, people of value. I mean, the Democratic Party has become a secular party. So. Is the Democratic Party really? America was founded based on Christianity. Our DNA is Christian. Our roots are Christian. We aren't Muslim. We, we aren't uh, atheist. America is the greatest country that's ever existed, and it's because of Judeo Christian values. There we have it, folks. The scariness of our country. And what a blogger just no, 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 notated recently because it, Roe versus Wade most likely is going to be overturned and abortion is going to be illegal and it's terrifying. You know, uh, God helped that. Oh, I said God, hope, sorry. God or goddess or whatever you want to believe in, they help the 12 year old that got raped and she's going to have to have her baby now. Fuck that shit. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know. Peace out.